just to make a quick buck and go home. Of course, when you're in multilingual classes, you can't know every student's language, and it's a complete waste of time to constantly be doing that. But those classes tend to be in ESL context, which typically students are, uh, they're more motivated, they, they have more access to resources, bilingual resources outside of the classroom. But even there, with this big study done in back east in Canada, um, having bilingual informants to just come in and just kind of mentor these people, hugely helpful. Um, but the dogma, a lot of people, that's what they're saying, it's just because, it's just, it's just assumed. English only is This best. dogma, to me, it seems that it comes from Japanese, uh, like uh, English language teachers, not from foreign language teachers. I think foreign language teachers are much more willing to actually use Japanese in the classroom. Now, yeah. Oh, yeah but yeah. the Japanese uh, uh, English language teachers, they, they are often scolded me at my school. Mr. Shah, you cannot use Japanese in your classroom. You are a native speaker. You must use English all the time. Do they use English all the time? No. See, now that, there's the problem because that's another huge debate where the, in Japan, uh, what often happens, particularly with the ELT situation, is that the Japanese teacher is considered to be the English expert. We'll do all the teaching, thank you very much. Your job is just to repeat what we tell you and give good model of pronunciation. Well, that. mm -hmm. But that's been really harshly criticized because the best models are the Japanese teachers who usually are phenomenally good at speaking English, but they think, well, it's, it's a waste of time if I speak English. We need to get them right. to the exam, so... I'll just use Japanese. A Japanese person speaking English in class would be a much better model because it's, as you say in Japanese, it's tozang. It's just like, of course you speak English, you're a native speaker. I mean, it's no, no big deal, <clears throat> right? Okay, 10 more minutes. Yes? Um, you know, I'm, teaching, um, I'm teaching English teaching to another you know, student who wants to be a teacher. Oh, great, okay. Yeah, I use the you know, um, English only yeah. in the class. and. Um, I introduced the kind of methodologies that you know, developed in the 20th century, yeah. uh, being from yeah, uh, translation, grammar translation yeah. to the uh, uh, communicative language teaching, yeah. including uh, uh, task based and project based kind of language uh -huh. teaching. And then, you know, the uh, half, second half is more like a comprehension based approach. Yeah. And you know, once I start kind of teaching the kind of methodology, the students start complaining that their English level is not good mm -hmm. enough for. Um, you know, they're using only English in the class. I mean, you know, they, I mean, as, um, maybe like, you know, if you do this, this kind of presentation, maybe you got a criticism, but uh, English teacher, like a native English teacher, mm -hmm. not good enough to use the Japanese effectively. That's very true. There are some teachers who don't have enough Japanese to, they do more damage than good. <laughs> I mean, it's true. We, again, some of these videotapes we get of teachers, it's like, oh man, you shouldn't have said anything. You should because the students are just completely lost because they're making mistakes. They don't know how to speak Japanese well enough, and that's where if you're gonna do it, it's just like a, a Japanese person who's an English teacher. You can definitely teach in English, but for example, if you're doing this kind of thing, this kind of genre-based approach, you get someone who's an expert speaker or even a native speaker to proofread the models that you bring in the class. And if you're teaching for models, you can say, well, listen, this is how expert speakers do this kind of thing. Now let's analyze what they do here. Um, I think most teachers who you're teaching probably will be able to do that. They might not be confident they can do it, but they will be able to do it. Um, should they be teaching only in English to lower level students? Well, that's the game that we talked about here. I don't know, did I answer your question? I have this way of like skirting around the issue. Do you think like you know, the English teachers here, the native speakers have to learn Japanese too? Or... Well, I think anyone who lives in another country, it's only polite to learn that language. You know, I, I always wondered with, the, with some of my American friends and even, well, Canadians aren't that bad because we're used to like getting, you know, French and English and all this kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> but with uh, a lot of uh, and British friends of mine and stuff, they, man, I'll tell you, they, they just have not bothered to learn any Japanese at all. One guy was so proud of him, this American guy, he'd been here like 20 years, he was so proud that he couldn't speak any Japanese because of all the meetings he got there. And um, I just think, you know, well, if you're back in the States, how many times have you heard someone say, well, you know, on the phone with someone who's got an accent, like a thick Indian accent or something, and you've called some customer service line, it's like, well, why can't, can't I speak to someone who speaks English? Well, they do speak English. You know, it's just that, 
Well, now imagine what happens now. You're going to work every day into an office in another country, and you're expecting them all to speak your language? I mean, how arrogant is that? I think that you don't have to be fluent in a second language, and you can't get fluent in Japanese in a year. It takes a long time. I got my level one after being here for eight years, and I studied a lot, you know. Um, as long as you're trying, I think it, it goes a long way. And with, with explanations, that's where using bilingual materials and getting, for example, a Japanese colleague, if you're, if you're gonna use them, get them to either write it for you or check it for you or translate it for you in exchange for you doing them some favors in English. Okay, and that kind of cooperation is a great, great thing. For orally, if you're not that good at explaining stuff, don't. But if you know just nouns or like abstract things, you know that are gonna come up in class. Find out what they are before you go in. struggling with it, but, mm. you know, you're, you're kind of getting it across to the students. There's something about your making that effort that makes them want to respond by, okay, I'm going to try English. I mean, she's trying Absolutely. Japanese, and okay, she's falling on her face, but... <laughs> Absolutely. You know? I had an Italian teacher back in Florence, and she, um, she was actually really good. We had about six different language groups, and she could speak all of them. She could, like, get in there and, like, help out. And, okay... There were, there were some times when we were doing these, uh, uh, what do you call it, idioms and stuff that we just couldn't get. And then she'd just go, well, it's this, it's this, it's this, and like six of languages. And you can see like these lights come on. Oh, that's what it is, oh, that's what it is, oh, that's what it is. Then everyone's going, can I say this, can I say this? Um, I think I've just completely sidestepped your question again. <laughs> um, I did not speak ten languages when I was teaching at Boston University. <laughs> okay, well, your, your point is valid. I think that when you show students that you're also trying, you're willing to make mistakes and that you're doing your best, I think that says volumes from them because if you come at them with a point of, I'm a native speaker and you need to learn my language, that's like linguistic imperialism and a lot of yeah. people deep down they don't like that. They might not say anything to them, but they don't like it. A lot of people think so. Hold well, on, I got, I, got, I got a quick line up here. I got like five minutes left, okay? This is quick one. Okay. Uh, doing a research project. Students doing a research project. Yes. Researching in Japanese or researching English websites? Any, any um, I think there's a huge amount to be gained from asking students to try and do some research in English. If for no other reason, just because there's more information in English. You know, if they use Japanese websites, Japanese websites are notorious for being made by personal personal websites that are, you know, who knows, it's just their opinion. You know, you want to get them out there and, and see what else is out there in the world. But also, I mean, the amount of reading. Just skimming and scanning for information is a huge amount of stuff. So like copying from the English websites. Well, that's, 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 that's another huge problem. Or using translation software. Yeah. It goes to Disneyland. It, it takes writing seriously. I mean, where did that come from? It came from translation software. Uh, next.